fact, a single pellet of nuclear fuel, weighing just 10 grams, generates the same amount of electricity as a thousand kilograms of coal. The ability to get so much energy from such a small amount of material is what launched global interest in nuclear power in the early 1930s. As we all know, it also led to massive destruction when U.S. planes dropped atomic bombs on Japan in World War II. Now, as governments, companies and ordinary citizens get on board with the clean energy transition needed to avoid the worst impacts of global climate change, nuclear is a source of heated debate. Come along to learn how nuclear power plants work. Nuclear power plants work on the same principle as those fired by coal, oil or gas. Across various steps, they convert heat energy into electricity. While the others all burn fossil fuels, nuclear gets energy by splitting atoms of the heavy elements, mostly uranium and plutonium. That warrants explanation of some basic physics that happen inside the reactor. Fissionable elements, like uranium-235, are always on the brink of stability. Bombarding them with neutrons sends them over the edge causing the atom to split into two lighter elements and release new neutrons, which bombard other uranium atoms, and so on, triggering a chain reaction that releases heat. But the reactions also release energy in the form of radiation, and the material becomes radioactive. Strategically, three interacting components, fuel elements, a tank of coolant, and control rods, keep things under control. Fuel elements are thin rods filled with fuel pellets, and thus the target of neutrons released according to careful calculations. The number of rods, which may be thousands, determines the size of the reactor and its generating capacity. The coolant, normally water, has a dual role. First, it slows the movement of neutrons, thereby controlling the chain reaction. Second, it absorbs the heat energy, which gets transferred onward in the next step. Control rods also temper fission reactions. Typically made of boron or silver alloys, they can absorb spare neutrons. Plant operators can drop as many as needed into the core to manage the energy available to generate electricity or to shut down the reactions completely. While the heavily protected reactor generates energy, the turbine room transforms it into power. At one end of the room, water in two sets of pipes crosses paths without actually meeting. One pipe system carries hot water from the reactor. The other contains cooler water that naturally picks up that heat. FYI, the water temperature is usually around 300 degrees Celsius. High pressure in the first set of pipes keeps it from boiling, but the second pipes are pressure free. Water quickly boils and creates steam that gets directed through more pipes into the turbine, where it gets blade spinning, converting heat energy into kinetic energy. In turn, the turbines connect to a rotating shaft that connects to a generator, which transforms kinetic energy into electricity. Nuclear got loads of attention and money for research and development in the 1950s and 1960s. When the oil crisis of the 1970s drove up prices for fossil fuel imports, reactors were ordered almost daily. Accidents at Three Mile Island Chernobyl and Fukushima Dachi snuffed public and often government support. As a result, in many parts of the world, construction has ground to a halt. In 2020, 439 nuclear power plants in 31 countries generated 10% of global electricity demand. That leaves some 160 countries with no nuclear many of which rely heavily on coal and natural gas for electricity generation. With CO2 emissions on par with wind power, nuclear power offers a vital way to produce electricity 24-7, irrespective of the weather or season. 
In the context of accelerating climate change, perhaps it's time to ask if the benefits of nuclear warrant further investigation. <laughs>